Sicellum and Sewers would be the first piece of stepping stone content for gearing out fresh players for Tier 1 going into Tier 2 and beyond. Sicellum would feature three different dungeon wings with different themes, the bosses would drop exclusive dies, and you had to kill them for quest credit to unlock the Keeper's tokens, which in turn would allow you to buy the Keeper's set of armor. The Sewers was the order counterpart to Sicellum, which also rewarded players with unique dies and Keeper's tokens for gear. Most seasoned players will highly recommend completing the Keeper's set of armor to hold a new tune over until about level 25. This stepping stone content has played an important role in character building as a fresh tune on ROR. Something which would be teased, but never come to fruition. You may have heard the rumors from back in the day that the development team wanted to give the KOBS and Chosen a class resource, similar to all the other careers in the game. The patch would state that a career resource display for KOBS had been added for future use. An additional line of text states that the Chosen's has already been done, but isn't included in this patch. Unfortunately, as we all know, these changes would never be introduced into the game, and the KOBS and Chosen would remain the same as they are today. As some of us may have not known, the Global Cooldown or GCD would be tweaked back in 2018 during the Mega Rebalance patch phase. The Global Cooldown of pets would be increased to 1.5 seconds, while players would still be locked at 1.1 seconds. Some additional things to note from this post is the fact that pets would receive additional quality of life and survivability in intensive AoE situations. To stay on top of the trend of active balance, the same patch for September 1st of 2018 would feature a wide sweeping rebalance of careers. A lot of abilities would be tweaked for 15 different careers at once. Some would feature damage rebalances, ability tweaks, tactic reworks, career shuffling, everything you could possibly imagine. I set this patch to a slow scroll so you can read it if you would like to. There is also an aside at the bottom of this post, discussing how they are tweaking the way armor buffs and armor potions should interact together. The goal of this was to get past armor overcapping and provide armor debuffs from enemy classes a slight buff so that players would not become way too tanky, a very healthy tweak that could probably be implemented to this day. Azario would return one last time on the changelogs postings for four patches, three of which were updates, and one which was a hotfix for his final see off of the project. Each patch would work on at least three things, but the important part was the ability rebalancing. The second patch would feature a few minor ability fixes, and then, seemingly out of nowhere, a third patch as long as someone's family tree was posted. There was changes just about across the entire board of classes. Some important ones to note, Rampage would become unrestricted. It used to be locked behind a two-hand weapon requirement to be able to use. Anyone playing the game today knows just how powerful the Slayer Ball can perform when playing as or against order. Wait, what? What is this? Other than that, there was a lot of ability remapping and shuffling abilities to different trees. Witch Hunters and Witch Elves would also see quality of life changes and ability remapping as well. It was worth noting that there was a big damage buff that was later reverted for Witch Elves, which apparently increased the flat damage of Ruthless Assault by 50%. Both classes would have dots become uncleansable as well. For the rest of the changes, there was mostly balancing at that point. One month after Azrael's Mega Balance patch, there was a Q&A session to be held for the community. This Q&A would be the first ever semi-official event for the team to reach out to the fans of the project and answer questions. Unfortunately, in this audio recording, which I recovered with the help of my friends, you will hear Azrael himself accuse another developer by the alias Torque Madra. He would also expose deeper relations amongst the staff members for all to see who had attended the Q&A that day. His reasoning for it was that Torque Mudger was creating a toxic work environment as well as abusing players with his game master and development powers.
All right, question number two is for Assyrian Grandpa. It's from Gravord. And Gravord is asking, I hope you will not delete this message, but I have no doubts about you guys and the staff. Have you taken a look at the abuses that went on while you were absent from the game? Two staff members come to mind for this. They are Torquemadra and Wargrimner. These two by far did the most damage to the reputation of the game than anyone else, and yet they are untouched and no punishment for them. Right. I will answer this question. I will answer it in detail. But first, I would like to make sure that I exclusively hold the floor and that no one will interrupt me as I do. And the next thing is that I must confess that this is extraordinarily stressful because I'm going to have to handle a lot of stuff in front of a lot of people. And I'll level with you all. I am afraid. I'm just taking a lot upon this. I'm just taking my mental health, my reputation, and my part in the project. But I personally believe, and I agree with Grabot and the other people who have asked the question, that this has been swept under the rug, and it has to stop, and it will stop today. Now, those of you who have not been on the staff would be forgiven for thinking that because we are staff, and because you have not seen much action from Return of Reckoning in terms of dealing with this problem, that we as staff are immune. I am going to tell you that we are not. We're going to have a lot of reacting to do in regards to this hour and a half rant as... Telling choice of language on your behalf. Thank you. Hey, I want to keep you okay. around. I know that uh, we, we extended uh, all of our time, but um, I'm going to continue with this session. Um, I don't want... I, I mean, I really don't want to ignore um, the community's questions. Those of, uh, those of my moderators that I assigned to the PVE category, please start, gather up the questions, and uh, please... If you will, um, small or killable. You guys are at an hour and a half at this point, so you've already gone past like how long we can run this. Um, uh, that, it's it's okay. I mean, right I mean, now. we're gonna try. Yeah, we're, we're gonna try to get through. So I don't know who you're gonna have answer questions uh, as is being pulled from everything right now because this is like I don't know, probably one of the biggest betrayals I've seen in any kind of game ever. So sure, <laughs> it's it's kind of funny. How could you get to where you are? Okay, um... Don't okay, take it uh, the wrong way. It's not like we don't want you around, but man, you really could have discussed a lot of this stuff in lead chat, where we do have committee, where you were involved, where you were asked to participate when you have questions like this, when you have concerns like this, so we can do something about it. And this is just, I mean, this is you making a power play. And the, the reality of the situation is you're not in position to do that. During the Q&A session, Azariel would be forced removed from his development powers, causing a handful of members that were put in power under his influence to leave along with him. Only a year following this event, sometime in early 2019, Torque would give his own ultimatum as well, concerning balance moderators, that would result in him being removed from the emulator team. On Torque's way out, however, he decided to pull a fast one on the team. This would be to delete all of his forum posts and his status as an inactive developer, effectively discrediting himself as ever working on the game. It's a scary situation to take into further consideration. Consider the fact that an unhappy developer is upset with how the game is being made. What if he ended up destroying ROR on the spot as one last display of power? These are all just what ifs. But the reality of the situation was that ROR lost two very talented and extremely dedicated developers in one year's time. It's a massive shame that things couldn't have worked out differently. The focus of the game would definitely shift, but in a subtle way, following the events of this disastrous Q&A.